And I was just browsing on my phone on YouTube, and I was like, ah, right, let's go check out some old videos of mine. Because I have, I've been making videos since fifth grade, okay? Since I was like 10 years old, 11 years old or something. I've been making videos for a long, long, long time. So I have all those videos on my channel still, privatized. You can't see them publicly, but I can see them still. So I went through and I watched a bunch of stuff, and I was like, oh, I remember my, my first tier list ever in Risk of Rain 2 was made on April 10th. Actually, I have it pulled up right here. April 5th! April 5th! Holy crap! Wait! 2019. The game released into early access March 28th. Or is it 27th? Darn it, I never remember. My wife's birthday is the 28th. Is it the same day as my wife's birthday? It's March 27th. I uploaded this basically 10 days after uh, the game released. But I watched it a little bit. It's not that bad. It's really not that bad. But there is some definitely... Because it you have to think about... It's a time capsule, essentially, because it's no one knew anything about the game still. You'll watch the background footage. The B-roll footage that I used in this tier list was like the best run I had had thus far. And just you, you'll see by what I'm doing in the footage. You'll be like, what the heck is this? No one knew anything about the game back then, right? It's still it's an incredibly complex game, even at the start of early access. So there were tons of stuff. This was the time in Risk of Rain 2 where the majority of the players thought that Ocular HUD, the equipment, gave you double damage on top of double damage. If you already had 10 lens maker glasses double you, you capped your crit chance elsewhere and you got ocular people thought it would then double that damage as well right so this was like the infancy of the game no one knew anything about the game basically just for for context sake the, the game hadn't even been patched yet okay so i figured it'd be fun there are some there are some interesting takes here also I i'm gonna watch it on uh 1.75 time speed number one because i watch all my youtube videos in that speed now and i can't stop once you start you can't stop it's not brain rot it's the opposite what do you mean if you can't comprehend the words of someone speaking at a faster pace you may Maybe you've got the brain rot. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, bro. If you can't comprehend what's going on, what's being said, maybe it's you. All right. Without further ado, let us dive back. Take a plunge into the deep history of Risk of Rain 2 with the very first tier list ever made. Never before seen by the vast majority of you. Featuring yours truly. Let's get into it. Hello, and welcome to my item and equipment tier list for Risk of Rain 2 as of April 5th. So this is about two weeks after the game came out. So before we jump into it, let's go over what the tiers actually mean. S tier, you always pick the item up. Very good item. A tier would be its versatile choice, but not always useful, but pretty much always useful. B tier would be good, but definitely not always useful for your specific build. C gives a small effect on gameplay, not that important. Might as well pick it up. D is very little benefit. You pretty much only want to pick these up to turn them into the 3D printer. And then finally, F tier is definitely only pick these up for the 3D printer. There's no other reason to pick these items up. Okay, already. It's like, why does this matter? Why, like this stuff, that's why I didn't really do this explanation for the most recent tier lists that I've done because it doesn't matter, right? Every, everybody, everybody understands the point of a tier list, right? I, I felt the need to kind of explain stuff, but at the end of the day, you still pick up every single item in the game. Even back then, like you never just ignored items, uh, so you would always pick everything up. So it's more so just like always pick up. I could have phrased that a little better, I guess, but is it too fast? Are you guys, wait, is it really too fast for you guys? Do you want to do 1.5? All right, let's do 1.5. Tell me if 1.5 is a digestible. Also, for the sake of brevity, right? I don't, I don't want this to be like an hour-long video. On, unless you want it to be. Do you want it to be an hour-long video? All right, we'll go to 1.5 speed. That'll be better. But seriously, you, get, you guys need to try it out. Trust me. Once you start watching videos at faster speeds, you don't want to go back. I promise. It's so much better. All right, but I'll put it on 1.5. They're garbage. <laughs> right, so, starting off here with the Soldier Syringe S tier, if anyone had to ever doubt that, Soldier Syringe is one of the best items to get, or especially early on. Starting off uh, big. Because not only do these increase the rate at which you attack, obviously, it says that right here, but also any any animation, pretty much, for your character that relates to one of your skills. So if you're charging the bomb on Artificer, if you're placing your turrets... Oh! If <laughs> this was that era, dude. Artificer. Oh, you're going to hear that so much, too. I, you're going to hear that so much, I can already... Oh, man, this was... <laughs> If you're throwing down mines, if, if, any skill, any skill, the ice wall, any skill in the game, this increases the, the time at which it, or sorry, decreases the amount of time it takes to complete that action. So definitely S tier. S tier, soldier runs, okay. I would give this an A, only because it's not, I mean, it'd be absolutely bonkers if this was 15% flat and then just 15% flat and additional. So you'd only need like seven of these to get to 100% block chance, so you'd never take damage. It doesn't work like that. So you get 15% flat and then it increases that number by 15%. So 15% times 0.15. That's not how it works. And then you get to that number. That's so not how it 16. works. Like, like I said, this was the infancy of the game. Like no one knew anything about the game. All I knew is that it wasn't flat 15% each stack. I didn't know how to articulate it past that. It doesn't actually work like that. It would still, it would be a terrible item. If it worked by giving you flat 15% and then increasing that 15% by 15% each stack, I agree you would need a ridiculous Mr. amount of teddy bears. The, the way teddy bears actually work is it's a logarithmic scale. So it like starts, it ramps up pretty quickly and then it starts falling off and it never approaches, a, it never gets to 100%, you can't... I think if you get, like, a an absurd amount of teddy bears, you have to basically mod in the teddy bears. I think you can technically get to 100% block chance. I don't know how many you need. It would be a lot. It'd be a lot. Or, like, where it's essentially 100%, but not... Not 
Like, actually. A anyway, all you need to know and what I've always used for teddy bears is 10 stacks of teddy bears equals 60% block chance on the money. Exactly 60%, 10 stacks. If it was the way that I described in this video, if it was 15% flat and then an additional or then it's scaling that number by 15% per additional stack, that'd be terrible because you'd need like, I don't even know what, what percent you would have at 10 stacks, but that's not how it works. Anyway, let's go. 17% and then just cascades and cascades. I think someone did the math. You need like 6,000 teddy bears to take zero damage. So A tier, not S tier. They're still really good though. Monster Tooth, F tier. Don't even pick this thing. Oh, pick look at that. Look at that. Look at that. You guys see, I'm telling you, this is a time capsule. Look at this. Killing an enemy spawns a healing orb that heals for 10 health. Flat. Not percent. 10 health. And it was five additional health per stack. The items were terrible. Bro, I'm telling you, if you didn't play Risk of Rain 2 back in the heyday, some of the items were just trash. You think the bad items are bad nowadays? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You had to kill an enemy, and then you get 10 health, dude. <laughs> it was so bad. So that deserves F tier, honestly. That, that was a pretty good rank. The 3D printer. It's garbage, though. So. Lens makers, glasses. Some people might be surprised, but I'd do this A tier, not S tier. Because if you think about it, so critically strike means you deal double damage and it gives you 10% crit chance. So essentially it gives you 10% more damage, not, and it's, that's not, that's not totally bonkers compared to some of the other items like sticky bomb, for example. So this is A tier. Crits are good, but they're not, they're not totally. So like the only reason I put this in A tier was because of old sticky bombs and you'll see old sticky bombs in just a second. Don't worry. If you're a little confused, cause I was confused when I first, I was like, I didn't put that in S tier. Trust me, trust me, because it's a common item and you have to rank the items in accordance to what you could have gotten as other items, AKA sticky bomb. You'll see why. Odd tier. Oh my god, these things are amazing. So I'd give these the hoof also an A. Movement speed is very important in this game. That's a good rank. From what I've seen so far and what I've played, uh, mobility is definitely the best form of defense. So just don't get hit. Seriously, it's, it's that simple. Just don't get hit. So anything <laughs> that allows you to not get hit is good. So A tier on the hoof. Bustling fungus. This one's interesting. So this is D tier. Probably yeah, I'd give this a D on everybody except That's fair. for the engineer. If you're playing the engineer, this is the single best item to get in the game. Period. This is S plus. This is like one of the only S plus items in the game on engineer specifically. Everyone else, it's a D. So the reason that is because when you place your turrets, the AOE of the heal overlaps on the turret. So they heal one another. And then if you stand in the center, it heals you. And then if you stand still, your fungus activates and you heal both the turrets. So it's like a three-way heal. It's absolutely nuts. And if you get like 10 stacks of these, the circle gets massive. I'll show a clip right now. I have like 20 something stacks of this. The circle was like the size of the teleporter. It was massive. So engineers is S plus. Everyone else, it's D tier. So I, th I think I overvalued healing back then. I think everyone kind of did because, okay, here, here, here's what I was talking about. So I think everyone kind of overvalued healing back then, especially myself. Uh, because look at the run in the background. I'm at 65 minutes. This is stage uh, five, stage five back then, because we didn't have a uh, uh, siren or what is it called um, sky metal. We did not have sky metal. So this was a loop. I, I had already looped. Obviously, the run is pretty garbage, honestly. Uh, but again, like no one knew anything about this game. I thought this was one of my best runs that I've ever had because I was playing double rebar multi with uh, retool. This was when people first figured out like that was like one of the best things to do in the game. And I had a wood sprite, and that constant healing, the trickling in of the healing from the wood sprite, felt so freaking good. And this again, this is when people were mostly playing on rainstorm. Not a lot of people had ventured into monsoon yet. So this was feeling like one of my best runs ever back then. I re I remember this run. I still remember the feelings that I had from getting this run. I was like, yes, dude, this run was so good. That was so much fun. <laughs> if you actually look at the footage, I don't think I leave stage five. I think we're on the stage for the entire video, bro. <laughs> like, that's what felt like a good run back then. It was crazy. It was a totally different game, man. Uh, such a good time. So what I'm trying to say is that I think uh, S plus on engineer, obviously it's really freaking good on engineer and he didn't have stationary turrets. This, this was before skills 2.0 ever existed. So there were no alternate abilities, nothing on the survivors. So the base kit of the survivor, that was all you had so this was this was a standout item especially when, when you got like a couple a few stacks of bungus it felt amazing all right so anyway let's continue on the runaway hide in a corner regen for like two or three seconds which gives you like i don't know like seven percent of your health ten percent of your health so it's not that not that good crowbar i would give this a b tier it's really good on burst classes so if you're doing a burst build on the artificer for example i'll link to my video I'm a build guide where crowbars are actually very, very useful for that. So if you're using like the That's Royal Capacitor equipment, which deals 3,000% damage, this is just essentially giving you 50% more damage on top of that. So it's it's not bad at all, but it's only to above 90% health. So like I said, it's for burst damage. B tier, so not bad. Tri-tip dagger. Also, some people might be surprised, but I give this a D tier. And the reason why I give it D is because it's not AOE and the single target isn't really that strong when you think about it. So it's 15% chance to bleed for 240 base. So, and it's additional 15% chance. And I think if you go over 100% chance, it will do two bleeds instead of one. It'll give you one bleed guaranteed and then a 15% chance to do another bleed, if that makes sense. Yeah, so, okay, a lot to unpack there. Um, So for you risk of rain zoomers out there, uh, bleed was not permanent back then. In fact, bleed being permanent stack ability, like refreshing all of the stack durations on a new application, that's relatively new. Still, I mean, it's probably old now, but 
we we had bleed back then was garbage. It was straight up trash. Even on Captain or uh, Captain wasn't released. Commando. Even on Commando, if you went nail gun multi, it was just garbage. <laughs> so D tier was actually pretty. I say that's fair back then. Maybe it could have been C tier. I, I'm not. No. I, even even then, because remember you have sticky bombs. Once we get the sticky bombs, you'll understand everything that I'm saying here. Um. So I think D tier for tri tip back then. That's a pretty fair ranking. Um. <laughs> although uh, it's it does not give you multiple stacks of bleed. I was incorrect in saying that. I don't know why I even said that. Who knows, man? That's one of those things, right? I guess no one, man, I don't know. It's just too early, bro. It's too early in the game to understand that. Um, yeah, no, I, I, that would be awesome if uh, going past 100% bleed chance gave you another bleed. That'd be crazy. But anyway, I think D2 is pretty fair. So you have to get multiples of these for them to start being good. And the way I'm, I'm ranking these items is at a very low stack count, if not just one of the item. So one of the tri tips. Again, good, that's, so that's like explaining the ranks at the beginning. Like, there's not really any point in doing that, like explaining the, what, exactly what S, A, B, T, like the discrepancies between them. Um, I don't really feel like I should have ranked items based on low stack size. I mean, it makes sense kind of when you think about it, uh, because you're not going to get like a billion of a certain item in a given run. So you can't just rate an item based on how good it is at the maximum situation. You have to just take the average. That's more what I should have said is just, I'm just thinking about the average situation of a run. But again, this was made not even two weeks after the game came out. So no one, no one really knew what the average run would look like. So I guess that's probably why I did it back then. Just in hindsight, give it a, I'll give it a D tier because it does something right. War banner, same thing. Give it a D tier. It does something, but you have to stay inside the AOE of the circle for this to do anything. Sorry. <coughs> Something <went through. laughs> What the heck was that? I kept that in? What? But you have to stay inside the AOE of the circle for this to do anything. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> <laughs> Why did I keep that in? <laughs> Wait a second. You have to stay inside the AOE of the circle for this to do anything. Sorry. <coughs> Something went <my> through. <coughs> You have to stay inside of the circle for it to do anything. And I, and I even started the sentence again. So it's like I definitely wanted to redo. I didn't even. I just forgot to take it out. Circle for this to do anything. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you have to stay inside of the circle for it to do anything. And the circle's radius is so small that it's it's really, really tough to get use out of this. And especially because it only props when you level up. So when you're later in the game, you'll, you'll get very, very few of these. And if you stay in that kind of a small circle. In That's, later fair. Game, That's, That's fair. D tier war That's fair. That's good, slug, C tier, it does something uh, similar to the fungus. You have to run away and hide on most classes. But oh, dude, the, the slug used to be trash. The slog used to be absolute freaking garbage because being in combat was not just taking damage. Being in combat is like red whip. So if you used any combat related ability, it stopped healing you. Re Cautious slug was actually trash back then. It's funny because slug is like one of the best healing items to get now just for one single stack early on. You know, especially if you play on Eclipse difficulty, Slug is like god tier to get. This thing sucked. Uh, also, the region formula was way different back then. I don't, I don't remember exactly. Oh, oh, it, it didn't. Um, wait, does Slug heal a flat amount now? I don't know what they did. It, it, it's like vaguely in my mind. I don't remember exactly the numbers, but Slug was just trash back then. So I think C tier might have been too high. Honestly, I think it could have been D tier. But again, I think I think everyone kind of overvalued healing in general back then, uh, myself included. So maybe. But it used to be trash, dude. Turrets for the engineer. Yeah, base. yeah. It, so this increases health regeneration by 250%. It would increase the base value of your health regen, which I think every survivor was like 1.6 per second or something. So you would get, I mean, that wasn't like terrible, but having the flat value is way better as well. It's, it's more noticeable. And the fact that it canceled basically if you did anything was just, it was awful. Like it's then. not good on the engineer either. So C tier on everybody. It does something. Pick it up if you see it, but don't go out of your way to see it. Personal shield generator. Look at that. So initially I thought this that. was like a B tier, maybe a C tier, especially with transcendence, the, <laughs> the item that a lunar item that converts all your health Bro, to energy shield. It's not even a percent. Look at that. It's just flat 25 shield. But turns out that this shield is separate from your other energy shield. So if you convert into energy shield with transcendence, this is still separate. So when your regular was energy shield is then. recharging, this will not recharge. It was terrible. Reason. It just doesn't work like it that. Was so this is an additional pool, no matter what. It was so your bad. actual health. So if your actual health is converted into ES from transcendence, this is still separate. So it'll still recharge separately. So it's it's so bad. This thing is awful. So I give it a D tier only because it's still health, right? At the end of the day, it's still a little bit of damage. It was terrible. Make it. This is absolute trash for the 3D printer. This thing so bad. Don't, don't even look at, look at the medkit, by the way. Sorry, they distracted me. Look at the medkit. Med 10 health, 1.1 seconds after getting hurt. Heal for 10 health, 1.1 seconds after getting hurt. 10, not 10%. 10. <laughs> medkit what? I cannot overstate how bad medkit and monster tooth were when they first released. It was so freaking bad dude so bad don't, don't and look all, all i said all you i know, said pick it up but only use it for the 3d health right at the end of the day it's still a little bit of damage medkit this is absolute trash do not pick this thing pick it up but only use it for the 3d printer this thing so bad don't, don't even bother looking at that don't even bother looking at it. <laughs> gasoline so this is the tri-tip with the tri-tip dagger wants to be this is aoe 
it only procs on kills, sure, but it's very easy to kill like a, a regular yellow mob, and then it'll proc the bleed or the let's bleed. I just call bleeds DOTs. Uh, it'll proc the the ignite, the damage over time to everything in the radius, and then it'll cascade if you kill the next thing. Then all that will go to something, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is good because it gives both increased the radius per stack and increased the damage per stack. That's also why it's very good. It's very useful at one stack, but if you get like two or three of these, ooh, the damage comes out. So A tier, A tier on the gasoline. And th this was uh, again, this was back at the infancy of Risk of Rain too. I think the real the only real AOA was like ukulele, obviously. Will of the Wisp, which are both green items, and then Prion Accumulator. This is when Prion was like the best. Capacitor and Prion, no no competition. Those are by far the best two equipments to get because of that AOE capability. So the, the AOE you got from Gasoline actually felt pretty good. In hindsight, I probably did over overvalue that because it, this was pre- uh, gasoline that you know nowadays where it has the flat explosion damage then it has the additional dot on top of that that was only the dot back then um but just because of how bad tri-tip dagger was and gasoline i think was the only other source of dot in the game at that point i think i think that's why i rated it so high because it gave the aoe and it gave you uh, the dot on top of that just to like kill the little fodder enemies that they're called uh stun grenade i did this a b tier stunning is very useful for bigger targets but a lot of the bigger targets can't be stunned that's i think the the most beneficial would be the, the elder lemarians stun grenade really actually felt pretty decent back then i'm not even joking can't stun even though it was actually just worth isn't it 10 percent now i think it's 10 percent uh for the first stack and then it's five percent for extra something like that it actually felt pretty decent back then to be able to stun a lemurian of course this is before eclipse even existed so it's just regular oh. speed enemies it didn't feel that bad. On bosses, obviously. It didn't feel that bad, dude. So they're, they're good, but they're not that good. So B tier. Fireworks, C tier. They do something. They do a little bit of damage. They'll help you out in a sticky situation. Maybe if there's a, a barrel or a chest or something. C tier. Go, go See, so far, it's not bad. I don't really do that much. Energy oh. drink, also A tier. Anything that gives you mobility, movement speed, jump height, jumps, etc. It's probably going to be A tier. Mobility is so important in this game. And sprinting is actually a huge bonus to sprint, by the way. Like that. A tier super energy super drink? That's good. So That's a good rank. Drink. Backup magazine. This is an interesting one. So on everybody except for the engineer, this is S tier. This is absolute amazing item so it gives you extra charge on your secondary which is the bomb for the artifact interesting the energy on everyone Mando, but engineer slashes for the mercenary etc etc the only person this is complete garbage on is the engineer and this is actually oh. f tier on the engineer because you start with 10 mines and this gives you an additional mine so it's basically 10 percent as useful as it says on the engineer so definitely do not pick this so one. this was back in oh man uh, this is a huge throwback for a lot of you guys that were playing back then so engineer this is before skills 2.0 again so no alternate abilities engineer had 10 charges of his mines i don't remember how much the damage they did uh, per stat or per use, but he had 10 mines at the start. So backup mag only gave you one additional mine out of those 10. So it was, it was garbage on engineer. But I think S tier on everybody, that's still uh, too high. That was still too high. It, it, you know, hindsight way back when, but obviously I wouldn't have given it S tier anywhere close to that. And I think I'd probably adjusted that in my next tier list. It'd be interesting if I look at my rankings and the tier list that I made like five days after this one um, to see what I changed and what I didn't. But S tier is probably too high. Here we go. On the engineer. This Here we go, baby. Else, so very Hold up. All right, so the sticky bomb. Sticky bombs. 07. 07. Sticky bombs. We will never, ever, ever forget you, boys. 07 in the chat. Old sticky bombs. Let's let's hear me talk about it first. This is S tier on absolutely everybody. So as you can imagine, the multi attacks super fast. So you might be thinking, oh, this is absolutely bonkers on the multi. But in reality, uh, every character has what's called proc coefficient. So multi has a 0.4 proc, proc coefficient, which means it has less than half of this chance at one stack to proc. So instead of a 5%, it's like a 2% chance to proc it, basically, like 2.2, something like that. I don't know. That's too much math right off the top of my head. But the reason why these are so good is because it gives you additional chance to proc on top of increased damage per stack. So if you get like, well, any number of these are pretty good, but definitely you're starting to get up to like five, seven of them. Oof, the damage will start cranking out with sticky bombs. All right, so S tier, S tier on sticky bomb. Rest Dude, that 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 I, that was not enough of an explanation. If you didn't play Risk of Rain two back then, you just don't know. You just don't know. If you found that's why we always pay our respects to sticky bomb printers specifically because if you found a sticky bomb printer, your run was done. That was it. GG. You went. Sticky bombs were disgusting. Disgusting. Again, it had increased proc chance and increased damage per stack, so you could just get as much damage as you wanted in a run just by getting sticky bombs. That was it. You get up to a 100% chance to proc it for like 2,000% damage, and then uh, they just die. They just die. Old rest. Okay, this is On interesting. On top too. of increased damage per stack. So if you get like, well, any number of these are pretty good, but definitely you're starting to get up to like five, seven of them. Oof, the damage will start cranking out with sticky bombs. All right, so S tier, S tier on sticky bomb. Rusted key. Uh, C tier. It, it does something. It gives you a lockbox. Lockbox can give pretty much any item. Well, everything can pretty much give any item, but C tier. It's like an additional chest for free, and you have to find it without any icon cell. So, so, armor so interesting thing here. Uh, rusted key was way different back then than it was what it is now. Back then, it gave you just a regular chest's worth of loot. So you could get a common, you most likely would get a common item. Sometimes you got a green, sometimes you got a red item. It was a common chest though. And it, it was uh, way harder to find. The the yellow glow that's around the lockbox did not exist back then at all. So it was pretty dang hard to find it. Uh, and you just got a regular chest worth of loot. So it was, 
it was pretty freaking bad, honestly. I think uh, C tier was definitely a fair rating there. Definitely. For piercing rounds, some people might be surprised again, but I would actually give these an A, not an S, only because you don't need like more than four or five of these. So any item that's an S, you, you want to endlessly stack them. You want to 3D print them. You want to do everything. I would not 3D print armor piercing rounds because you only, or I would if I had zero, but you only need like three or four of these, really. The 10% the per stack that, it was start not feeling that great. 10% like per four stack of these, back then. And it's not worth I think A is pretty fair. That's the only reason it's not S tier, though. But damage to bosses is super, super useful. So A, a tier, high A tier. It's called high A tier. All right, I mean, back then, the back then, the, the TP fights took a long time regardless. So I think. I think I undervalued that. That probably could have been S tier, given the context of what the game used to be. No, because again, you have to rate it in terms of sticky bomb. I would much rather have two more sticky bombs than two more armor piercings. So no, def definitely a... Like, sticky bomb... It, it was just because sticky bomb was that OP. Nothing else could go in S tier rank because of how OP sticky bomb was. Like, that's pretty much... That was my thought process back then. Thinking of my thought process, let's listen to this one real quick. Items now, missile launcher is an A. So it's not S, only because it doesn't give you increased chance to fire per stack. <laughs> if it did, it would be... One of the best items in the game, but it gives you 300 damage for attack. That's this good. is missile launcher A. This is uh, because of how OP Sticky Bomb was. That's the only reason. It's like 10% chance for 300% damage. How is that good? Look at Sticky Bomb. Now, what I didn't know back then, actually, I don't know if I knew this or not. I, I, don't, I, I didn't mention it in the video, but it was kind of obvious that your ATG missile could proc other stuff. I don't know. I don't know if that was a uh, common knowledge back then or not that ATG itself had proc coefficient. I'm assuming it wasn't, but I think A tier for an ATG back then with old Sticky Bombs, that's kind of fair, honestly, because that's just how OP Sticky Bombs were, man. It's bringing everything down. A Will of the Wisp, this is S tier. So this gives essentially every single class massive This is AOE. because it was AOE. It gives you increased radius and increased damage per stack so this is just absolute god tier and it gives you so much freaking damage per stack as well this thing is so strong you have a black hole the, the primordial cube if you have that you push it you just watch everything die instantly it's absolutely amazing so s tier definitely hopo feather again anything mobility gets an a or even an s uh but this one plus one jump always going to be useful it's so so good so this is definitely a tier oh ukulele uh probably b tier because it doesn't give you increased chance and it doesn't give you increased damage but it is, it is pretty good aoe but you have to proc this on every single auto attack, so you can constantly be firing. It's, <laughs> okay, it's, it's, it's I okay. think that it's answers our question. Might think. So I, I'd give this a B. I think that answers our question. I don't think, I, I definitely didn't know about uh, items themselves having proc coefficient. I definitely didn't know that. I don't think that was common knowledge across the community yet either. Because again, guys, you have to remember, people thought ocular HUD gave double crit damage regardless of your current crit chance. They thought it just gave you an extra 100% crit damage. <laughs> this, this was how new the game was back then, okay? Oh, man. Uh, leeching Seed. On everybody but the multi, this gets a C because it's only one health per damage, oh. not per damage you deal. Sorry, any damage you deal oh. doesn't matter how much damage you oh, get one health back. So oh. if you massive burst damage! You throw out one big attack, bam, you get one health back. But on again, the multi, overvalued you know, dealing. ridiculously fast. This gets an S plus because you <laughs> attack so fast on the multi and you get one health for every attack. And if you have like five of these, oh boy, you are healing like <laughs> nuts. You, you can pretty much Okay, remember, there were no skill 2.0. You didn't have alternate loadouts, so most everyone played. Uh, nail gun multi, okay? You would go one nail gun, you would go rebar, or you just go double rebar. So, the healing back then, I, I definitely overvalued healing back then, <laughs> but saying S plus T on multi, again, uh, not, not, we, we didn't even know that healing was affected by proc coefficient. Like, this was so young into the game's uh, life cycle. That, that's just funny, S plus. <laughs> Multi has the highest base armor in the game, and he has the highest base health in the game. There so you go. All of those combined, he's super freaking tanky with these things. So these are definitely S plus on the multi. Predatory instincts, I would give this an A. So if you're stacking crit, if you had 100% crit chance, then you pretty much just get 30% attack speed. And then if you get another one, somehow you get 60% speed. So it's it's good. It's not that good because you have to constantly be attacking and constantly critting to keep this thing up. But definitely A. Red Whip, I would give this a B. This is one of the only mobility items that gets a B, only because you have to not be in combat. So if you're getting hit, you don't get this benefit. Uh, does Red Whip still function like that? It does still function like that in game. No, Red Whip still functions almost. I feel like they made a change. I remember Red Whip getting a change at some point, and it wasn't the value of the speed, but it still cancels based on you doing an attack or not, like nowadays. So I don't know what they would have changed. I don't know. I, I remember them doing something, though. It's really good for uh, zooming around the map if you're trying to kite things around and you're not really getting hit. If you have like 10 jumps, you have the mega jump uh, legendary artifact. Or sorry, that's rare. I'm confusing the color. Legendary thing. artifact? What, what did I just say? Wait, hold on. Can anyone decipher that? artifact or sorry that's rare I can it, but it is you have like 10 jumps you have the mega jump uh legendary artifact or sorry, <laughs> was I, ta I was talking about head stompers i had to have been talking about head stompers <laughs> if you have the mega jump legendary artifact and jumps you have the mega jump uh legendary artifact or sorry that's rare i'm confusing the colors in my head uh the rare artifact that makes you jump super high you can pretty much always stay out of combat if you want to and this case would be super useful uh, interesting so b tier old war stealth kit i would give this a d it's oh man it, it sounds good on paper but it, in execution chance it's not that good. I haven't really chance on taking like, oh, man, damage so i have the old war here i just saved myself it's it's not that good so oh, stealth kit stealth kit hey and has anything changed stealth kit sucks now and it sucked back then
It can like maybe save you from something. Maybe. Uh, yeah, stealth kit was terrible back then too. Harvester's Scythe. So this thing, again, is very, very good on everybody, but on the multi, it is absolutely nuts because you attack so fast. So it gives you crit chance and it gives you healing on your crits. This is That's the big fair. part. Eight health per crit. And that's just flat. It, and the proc coefficient, like I talked about earlier, has nothing to do with this. So you just heal eight damage. Or that's incorrect, Wooly. Check yourself. Check yourself before you wreck yourself, foo. Eight health every time you crit. And because you attack ridiculously fast, it's, it's disgusting. On everybody else, I'd give this an A tier. So it's S plus on multi again, and it'd be A on everybody else. Fuel cell, I would give this an S on everybody. You always want to pick up fuel cells. They're always useful, no matter what equipment you're also, using. Also, the reason, the reason why I thought proc coefficient didn't affect it, I knew proc coefficient existed, obviously. I just didn't know it affected it because the visual, and this is still how it works in, uh, in Frisk and Rain 2 nowadays, the visual healing doesn't change. It's just the frequency of the healing. So if you're not, like, if you're attacking super fast, you're not going to be able to see the difference, right? You, 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 had to, you would have to, like, go frame by frame by frame by frame in a recording to see the difference. So the fact that I didn't see that 8 health on crit going down when I was, I was like, oh, proc vision just doesn't affect it. That's cool. I didn't, I didn't think that the proc vision could affect the chance to heal, not the, well, actually, wait, does it affect scythe at all? I guess it doesn't, right? Because it doesn't affect the amount. Wow. How does proc vision, how, how, like nowadays, how does proc vision affect scythe healing? I guess it doesn't if you have capped crit, right? If you have capped crit, you have capped crit. Boom. Easy. Enchilada. Easy enchilada. I don't think that sentence has ever been said, right? There's no way. Because it doesn't affect the value of the healing. It does affect the amount of health, does it? It affects the leeching seed, so it must affect the scythe. It doesn't affect the healing from the leeching seed. It affects the... Oh, yes, it does. Yeah, yeah. It's just the visual, the one health. It doesn't ever go below one. It doesn't show that you heal 0.6 health. Yeah, okay. So it's really weird how it works. So it does affect the amount of healing. It just doesn't display it until it reaches at least one. It looks like you're healing less frequently and you're healing for the same amount, but in reality, you're healing for less... It just doesn't, it's, it's weird. It's, it's weird. I don't know. I, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Let's keep going. For your build, you just get more charges and you can use it more often. Like, why would you not, why would you not pick this up? It's so good. All right. So moving on to what I get fuel cell? Some people Probably might be surprised again, but you always want to pick up fuel and it'd be A on everybody else. Fuel cell, I would give this an S on everybody. You always want to pick up fuel cells. S. Well, equipment, no what, was equipment was really good back then. Equipment was. get more charges and you can use it more often. Like, why would you not? Why would That's you not pretty fair. Equip so equipment was very, very, very powerful back then. Again, capacitor and uh, prion especially were just light years beyond everything. So fuel cell actually felt really freaking good back then. All right, so moving on to infusion. Some people might be surprised again, but I get this a B because yeah, you get 100 health per stack, but you have to kill one enemy per health, and there's no exception to that. So that's if you have five bad. stacks of this, yeah, you get up to 500 health, but you have to maybe kill overrated, but to get that benefit. That's and not that, bad. That, Beaters fair. Works. If you ever looked at your your post game screens, the lost screen, your enemies killed isn't going to be that high, and the chances of you getting all five infusions as you kill all those is so low. It's so low to get to get the real benefit of this. So one or two of these, very good. I would definitely pick them up. That's why they're B tier. They're definitely not above B though. Uh, Bandolier. This one's interesting. So I would give it a D on everybody, except for the, the mercenary, the melee class, because he's in melee range, obviously. So he's always on top of the people he kills, more or less. He might be near them, but he's definitely going to be close enough to pick up bandoliers, and then you can just keep spamming. So mercenary, it's okay, because you still have to go out of your way to pick them up sometimes. It's not A tier, it's not definitely not S tier. So B on mercenary, D on everybody else, because why would you ever go into melee range? You, you wouldn't. If you go into melee range, you're going to die. That's pretty fair. Uh, That's pretty fair. Cauldron. Again, enemy, we, we didn't know a lot about the game back then, so if you saw a big enemy, like you, most of my runs, you'll see uh, in the background footage, most of my runs, I was just kiting everything around, man. It was crazy. It was crazy. I was I was hyper scared, especially on monsoon. So getting close range to enemies, like you really just didn't do that back then. Like we we, we didn't understand target priority. We didn't understand um, weaving in and out of combat, all of that stuff. So I think that, that's pretty fair. D tier on and maybe C tier. You know, maybe D tier was too harsh, but I would give fair. this probably a C. Really, the only benefit with this is if you have like a primordial that's cube fair. again, and you you push it near the boss, and then you kill stuff, and then you go attack the boss for six seconds, then you get this massive attack speed boost. But other than that, there's not a situation where you it feel. Let me phrase it like this. If you're killing a bunch of stuff that quickly, then you don't really need a 100% attack speed bonus. The only time that's kind of how it works nowadays too. damage and like I said, you have to clump you have to clump all the monsters near the boss, kill the boss or kill the monsters and then start attacking the boss and you get 6 seconds of this benefit. So, it's just it's too situational. So, it's not that good. I give it a C. That's, that's Rose Buckler, I would give this thing a B. You get increased armor as you're sprinting. So, if you're trying to get away from stuff, just start sprinting. What does it give now? Is it 40 and then plus 30? What does Rose Buckler give now? Is it flat 40 and then plus 30 per stack or is it 30 30? I don't know. I it got it got slightly buffed at some point, but 25 armor 25 per stack well back then i mean that's that's not terrible ranking b we i mean we didn't understand the importance of armor and stuff back then but you know that's not bad beat there it was plus 30 nice well, it's okay it's not that good uh runald's band i would give this an dude a. it gives you wait what i say lots of damage old bands uh, uh runald's band i would give this an a it gives you lots of damage on stack and it gives you a slow so those are, that's very look good. at that bad boy you guys remember those percent chance bands you guys remember that good times Good times. Bands worked completely different. They were just a chance to proc, just like uh, ATG and stuff. But they still didn't have proc coefficient back then. Um, they never had proc coefficient. But that's a good times, man. Uh, the the chance to get your bands. I, I like new bands way more nowadays because you can do way more stuff with it. But percent chance bands are kind of fun. The same thing. band. I would also give an A. It gives you. Oh yeah. So they nerfed the damage by a lot. 
but they made the AOE way bigger. The the old Verno uh, Kiaro's ban, the fire ban, the AOE was like this this wide. <laughs> it was tiny, man. So they they nerfed the damage, but they giga buffed the AOE. So it actually does way more consistent damage nowadays. Way more. More damage, but no no CC of any kind. But the tornadoes strike many times a second, and they stack. So th these are probably a little better. These are maybe like low A, and these are high A, for sure. Uh, the Chrono Bobble, I would give this a D, because it says 60% movement speed for one second, but it's not that. Uh, for one second, it's so slow. It, it's not that useful. It's really, this is like League of Legends CC right here. 60% slow for one second, not that good. There you go. And finally, Wax Quail, I'd give this a B. This is the oh. only mobility item I'd give a B, not an A, simply because it, it boosts you forward. It doesn't really give you any height. It gives you a little bit of momentum. One of these is good, but two or three of them, it's just overkill. So I would just I would stick, stick a B. I, that, that's an underrated right, there, but the they, those are pretty good. Honestly, so far, commons and uncommons, whites and greens, not bad. I would say not that bad. I don't know if we're going to get into like some crazy stuff in here in a little bit, but honestly, that's that's not bad at all so far. Items here. The behemoth is an S on everybody All because right. it's bonus 60% damage so basically just 60% more damage in every situation except for damage over times so this is very very strong and it's AOE and we didn't know about a uh, base damage versus total damage back then um I don't think the items were written that way back then maybe they were did it say base damage back then yeah it did say base damage all right so I'd, I guess we, we just weren't privy to that or maybe some people were I wasn't back then uh the difference between base and total so this is 60% damage off of anything that has non-zero proc coefficient which is I, I correctly said dot is not affected because i knew that it didn't have proc coefficient i didn't know what proc i didn't know that was the reason back then but anyway i do not know back then if i knew whether or not this affected ice and fire ban it doesn't really matter or, or sticky bomb i probably assumed this affected sticky bombs as well which was obviously that's incorrect but you know it, it, s plus or s s rank on everybody this was when there were not a lot of reds honestly we almost have every red in the game uh in this run right now honestly we had we didn't have that many reds at all i think we're missing dios nope there's a dios right there so we're missing like clover meat hook we have a head stomper clover meat hook i'm trying to think chat what, what other reds were back in the game back then resonance wasn't in soulbound soulbound was in we had uh, so i'm missing soulbound like there weren't a lot of reds is what i'm trying to say so the the red item balance uh was not that good back then like oh my gosh once we get to frost relic you'll see frost relic was woof. Uh, even head stomper was terrible back then alien head was back then yep testicle was back then so we don't have all the reds in this run obviously but i, I had a good portion of them and you nowadays you look at this and be like oh yeah yes yeah, you know it's some reds it's a good amount of reds for a for a 100 minute run actually that's not a lot at all. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? There were way, way, way less red items back then. On everybody because it's bonus 60 so damage. So S, S rank for Behemoth, that's pretty fair. Situation, except for damage over time. So this is very, very strong. And it's AOE on top of that. So this is a great item. Ceremonial Dagger, this is S plus on absolutely everybody. This thing is absolutely nuts. Back then, that's probably fair. It show you the actual damage, but it's a ton of damage. Back then, that's probably pretty daggers. fair. And you get more stacks of this, it just gets insane. So this, this um, is absolutely So what, what did they change? What did they change for this? It used to be so disgusting. I think it was they lowered the amount of daggers that come out of enemies. Now it's only three. I think you would get, I don't know how many you got back then. It was a lot, but they dealt less damage overall. But you, it, I think it's because of the AOE factor. The ability to kill one enemy and then just have the whole chain go on. That happened way more frequently uh, back then, honestly. Par 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 partially because of sticky bombs, but... Um, I think, I don't know, S plus, I don't know about that, bro. I'd be like, maybe, maybe S or just like A tier even. But that, that kind of matters. Absolutely amazing. S plus on everybody. Frost Wellick, uh, this is the opposite. This is Frost Wellick. It's, it's a Frost Wellick. It's my, it's my Frost Wellick. It's my, it's my yo. It's insane. So this, this dagger is absolutely Chat. S plus on everybody. Frost Wellick, uh, this is the opposite. This is F on absolutely everybody. <laughs> Dude, it was so bad. Look at that. 33% damage per second, and this is the AoE. Look, I have it. Wait, do I have it right now? But you have to be in basically melee. I think I have it right now. Look at that AoE. Look, it's so garbage, dude. Frost <laughs> Relic on release. So trash, dude. Oh my gosh. This thing, I think it might be tied with a head stomper for the most changes that an item has ever got. Probably Frost Relic. I, I think Frost Relic has received more changes. There was a time where Frost Relic was buffed, not changed, buffed. Like, three patches in a row and these were major patches like it, it, they just desperately were trying to make frost relic good man finally it's you know it's in a pretty good spot nowadays but it was so trash on release range for this to get f rank was honestly pretty it accurate deals 100 percent damage not even 100 damage every second so it's just garbage absolute garbage uh the happiest max i would give this a b the ghost is useful it can take enemy aggro so it'll help you that's, that's not bad for is to, to draw enemy aggro to the b tier for that so these, this is a b this is the i just call it the mega jump uh that's basically all, all that's you for the jump height here don't use it for the damage and that's it. it just gives you additional jump height so this is a uh, a tier a tier on everybody uh head stomper just felt way way worse back then because bands weren't guaranteed obviously it was 
percent chance to proc ban, so you didn't have that combo, the head stomper ban combo. Infamous. It just it just didn't really feel like it dealt a lot of damage. I think it was something with the like people didn't know about trimping either, where you get a wax coil and you like jump off of a, a ramp to get uh, free height there or something. People didn't know about that. And Ar Artificer didn't have her hover. That was added later. So you couldn't get free height on Artificer. Like no one could really make use of uh, head stompers. It was really tough. Like Abyssal Depths. This was like the stage to use it. Or maybe like Rally Point sometimes. Also, it gave you fall damage immunity back then, right? Surely. Surely. Like this definitely gave you fall damage immunity, right? Did it used to not give it? Oh, yo, Hopu, how you doing, brother man? Welcome, welcome. Nice to see you. The man himself. The man, the myth, the light. How you doing, man? Yeah, it, there was something about it. I just remember it feeling terrible. That's all I kind of remember about this item. And look, Hopu himself. The calculation was buggy, so t sometimes it did no damage. There you go. The man himself. Yeah, it just it just felt terrible back then. That's that's all I remember from uh this item. And I definitely, once it got changed, I definitely undervalued it for a long time. Um, I will I will definitely admit that. But it actually was like not very good uh, when the game first released. Remember, this is before the first update of the game. Period. Not even like the first major update. Not Scorched Acres. This was pre-first patch of the game. So this was the infancy of the game. So it just felt bad. It just gives you jump height. So this is uh, A tier. A tier on everybody. Uh, the Nukana. Nukana. <laughs> Nukana. Wait, wait. Okay, I got it. <laughs> wait, wait. Go back. Uh, A tier. A tier on everybody. Uh, the Nukana. <laughs> Nukana. <laughs> Uganda, we go to Uganda. Gwa, gwa, gwa. Nukahana, Nukahana, whatever. This thing, <laughs> this is S plus on the engineer. It's B on everybody, and then it's F on the artificer. So let me explain here. So S plus on the engineer. Oh, uh, like I mentioned before, the bustling fungus, those heels get absolutely disgusting. All right, that's fair. You get like five of them, and that's fair. definitely more than that. So this thing just does so much damage. And remember, like that was the strat again, pre skills 2.0, pre everything. That was the strat on engineer. You just got Bungus, you won the game. That's why Bungus is a meme still to this day, right? Like you got Bungus, you just won the game. So the fact that you were already playing that, like every single run, that was the play style. And then if you got this on top of that, like it was just GG, right? So the S on engineer, that kind of makes sense. But B on right, everyone else? So S plus on engineer. Let's see. B tier on the rest of everybody because you'll be healing a bunch, yeah, but you won't be healing as much as the engineer and it doesn't do that much damage when it comes down to it. So uh, B on everybody else. The artificer, this is definitely F tier on artificer because oh. there's no situation where the artificer is healing. Dude! Well, there's, there's just no Dude! situation. Dude! So artificer. Dude, I remember now. Artificer, artificer by the way. Artificer had a 0.2 proc coefficient. I'm not joking. On both of her auto attack and her flamethrower. I think flamethrower was bugged as well. I don't remember that for sure. But definitely her primary attack had a 0.2 proc coefficient. So that's why you like never healed at all on Artificer. It felt so bad. Artificer was, if you think she's like bad nowadays, which I, I don't think she is, but if you thought she was she's bad now, I want you to go back and play a pre first build, pre, pre, pre first patch build of Risk of Rain 2. Go play Artificer. Tell me how that feels. Oh my gosh. It was so, and remember, like everything that we've talked about so far is chance based. Even the Ice and Fire Bane were chance based back then. She felt terrible she was still really fun to play i really enjoyed playing her because you, you know you get a royal capacitor or something and her, her bomb her her m2 always felt pretty good but her her auto attack was so garbage here because he has a charge based auto attack which means you can only fire four of them and it was charge based so on top yeah it was just terrible so f on artificer that makes sense recharge him so just f, f on artificer for sure uh the tesla coil I get this an A on everybody Ooh. because it does 200% base damage. It, it is a lot of damage every second, but the only situation where this is useful because there's so many sources of AoE in this game. Uh, they add the AoE is good, but it's single target. You want this thing for single single target, and the more stacks you get, you don't get uh, damage, so I'd give this an A. Uh, I mean, I, uh, nah, it should have been S tier. It should have been S tier. I mean, I got it, it's not like I gave it a D tier or something. I gave it an A tier, but S tier for sure back then. Even back then, that should have been S tier, 100%. So the Clover, I would give this an A as well. Ooh! What? <sighs> so I'd give this an A, not an S. So the Clover, I would give this an A as well. Oh my God. Remember how I literally just said that everything was chance based? Remember how I just said that? What a uh, bro let's go back. ahead and let's go ahead and one more time. The Clover, I would give this an A as well. That's what I thought. Yeah, uh, I don't know about that. What, what do I, let's hear. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Well, it's useful. It's very useful, actually, but it's not completely bonkers. I don't know why I said bonkers so many times this video. Who knows? Uh, it's useful, but it's not not that good. So I'd give it an A. That's all I say. That's all I say. Are you I serious? This, Clover, I would give this an A. Oh my gosh. I'd give it an A. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say on that one. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking back then. Like everything was chance based. Almost every single item that was actually 
like dealing damage and stuff was chance based. The meat hook, I would give this a C. It's not that much damage, <gasps> not that much AOE. It's just not that useful in general. So C tier. Gives okay, it okay. I definitely didn't know about proc chaining. Again, this was April 5th, 2019. The game released April, March 27th. Okay, this was not even two weeks after the game. I definitely did not know about items having proc coefficient. I knew what proc coefficient was. I knew it was on uh, survivor's abilities. I did not know that items themselves had proc coefficient. So this, <laughs> what, I gave it a C. I don't know why I've said bonkers so many times in this video. Who knows? Uh, it's useful, but it's not not that good. So I'd give it an A. The meat hook, I would give this a C. It's not that much damage, not that much AOE. It's just not that useful in general. So C tier. Also, it, it didn't deal. Bit. Like, it, what does it deal now? It, does, it doesn't do 100% damage, does it? It deals more than that. I think it hits less targets, but deals more damage. I don't know. Something like that. Um. <laughs> what? Young Willie Hubba Hubba. Stop, stop, no, no. Stop, stop, oh. stop. Stop, stop. Okay, so obviously not knowing that ukulele can uh, proc other stuff, not knowing that Mito can proc other stuff, obviously that's pretty bad. Why not? So the alien head, this so thing gets definitely not C tier. Absolutely not a C tier item. S tier, maybe even S plus on absolutely everybody because reduced cooldowns is just amazing. There's no situation where you don't want your skills. That's to not bad. So reduced cooldowns are absolutely amazing. That's not bad. I mean, but relative to other legendaries, even back then, I wouldn't give that an S. I would give alien head an A back then as well. It felt it definitely felt really good. Again, this was the power balance was nowhere near what it is nowadays. So alien head probably a little overrated at S tier, but it's still accurate enough. Catalyst, I would give this a B. Uh, it's good for big situations where you're killing tons of things very quickly, but again, similar to the, uh, the Berserker Pauldrons, if you're killing that many things so quickly, you probably don't need this benefit. So, not that good. I get a B. That's a good rank. The DOs, obviously, these things get an S tier, just a free, a free death. So, you die once, it goes away, and then you get another chance to not die. So, I mean, again, because of how early the game was, and the fact, look, this is Rainstorm. Like, I still... I think before this tier list, I had done maybe, like, 10 Monsoon runs or something. Like, I played a good amount of it, but not a ton. I admit, I had learned the game on Rainstorm. So having that extra life was like omega valuable to me. And I think to a lot of people back then as well, because playing on Monsoon, it was just a totally different world. It was so scary <laughs> playing on Monsoon, honestly. So I think having that extra life was just overvalued. But again, you have to, and if you don't understand the the reason why I don't like deals best friend that much and why most, most players don't is because you have to compare it to what you could have gotten, right? Because it's polluting the item pool, essentially. So you could have gotten a behemoth, a clover, a meat hook, a resonance disc even like anything that could have actually helped you and then when you die and use up the dios you then have to say well would i have died had i had a different red item would i've been put in that situation that killed me if i had had something i probably just would have killed the enemy that killed me you know so that that's that's the general reasoning behind dios best friend why well, it's 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 good but it's not amazing i don't know what i have it ranked at right now i don't I haven't checked my tier list in a while but giving it an s tier back then i was just like uh because the game was so young like it's just it was just scary so having the extra life felt good hard light i would also give this an s utilities are really really good on everybody and you get two charges every time you get this thing so and you get reduced cooldown so this, this thing is absolutely awesome hard light burn is great s on everybody okay yeah, over uh, but that's fine this kind of oh, sad but i have to give this a d the elite benefits as of right now again this is april 5th are not very useful when you get super late in the game yeah there's tons of elites absolutely everywhere but still it, it's i feel it's like this was different back then too i i i kind of remember a change going through with wake of vultures i don't remember when it was relatively early i would say like before artifacts update maybe i remember a change coming through with wake of vultures i don't remember what it was giving this a d tier i think that's still fair i mean nowadays wake of vultures is pretty freaking trash anyway but back then it was no different really there was a bug with the shields yeah but what was the bug oh i think yo yo i think it was when you killed an enemy and oh, you got your shields it was the opposite so nowadays when you kill an enemy and overloading when you lose the shields it just regens your health to full and that feels really nice right back then it was the opposite <laughs> when you killed an enemy and you lost all your shields you would spawn in with half health even though your health bar was technically full your health was full your shields were not i guess it was you know summed uh, even back then anyway i think that was what it was right yeah, it didn't heal you after the shields went away. Yeah, so it felt actually really bad. I don't know if I... Do I say that here? Not that good. Maybe, maybe like, I haven't got, like, ultra in-game. I definitely haven't gone over five hours. So maybe when you get, like, 10 Ultra hours, in game five hours? What the... Then this thing becomes absolutely disgusting. But for right now, I'll give it a, a D on everybody. Brain stocks, I'll give this a B. Again, the same thing. If you're killing stuff very quickly and you're doing tons of damage, then this thing is useful. Or, for instance, if a boss spawns or a really, really tough enemy spawns and there's an elite next to it, take out the elite and then spam all your stuff on the, the boss and then you have three seconds of lots of damage. Weren't elites bugged back then? Weren't elites kind of bugged? Was like the director cost too high? I, I kind of remember you didn't see that many elite enemies back then. Or No, maybe not. I don't I don't remember. There was some, some change that happened. I vaguely remember this. Maybe I'm just like misremembering entirely that a change went through and then brain stocks automatically felt better after it. Maybe it was buffed. Is it three seconds right now? It's four seconds right now, isn't it? I know I know it's numerically been buffed for sure. 
I think there's another change too, though. I don't know. Yeah, there were way too many. No, never mind. There were too many elites. I'm not Very trolling. situational, so it's not that good. So I'll give it a B. And finally, the rejuve rack. This is S plus on engineer because it heals so much more than everyone else, and then A on everybody else. Because it's just more. Right. Why wouldn't you want that? Again, I, I overvalued healing in general back then. So I mean, that's this is you know A tier rejuve rack. Uh, eh, not terrible. B tier probably was more accurate. But hey, so far I I really don't see the issue. Really, I mean, that's a pretty accurate. We're almost done too. That's pretty accurate, honestly. Except for the okay, clover, <laughs> meat hooks, ukulele. Those are the big ones, and that that's why that that is the majority of the feedback that I got. The players that were actually uh, you know understanding that stuff already were like, "Yo, that stuff's like incredibly OP." What are you talking about? I think that's where a lot of the the flat came from. And it's not like this video did like absolutely terribly. It has 407 likes. I mean, obviously the ratios are way off back then because I was a, an unknown quote unquote content creator. I, I, I was unknown. I don't know why I quoted that, but anyway, so like it, what relative? I think this has like a hundred something dislikes. I can't even. I don't think I can even see them on the the whatever it's called. But I, I definitely took the feedback to heart because I made it. I made an entire new tier list off of that feedback five days after this one. But so far, I think it's accurate for the most part. I would say. Actually, let's move on to legendary items. There's only two of them, in my opinion. These rares should be legendary, and these should be called rares. But you know, who cares? Is that is that what they're still called? Do you guys know that? So these are called legendaries on the on the wiki. I don't know if it's any more. And then the red items are called rares. It goes common, uncommon, rare, legendary. For some reason, I I, I think that's how it is. I don't know. So I so I was coming from like. You know, most MMO background, like the, the red items would be like the legendary ish or whatever. I don't know. I'm not I'm not a developer here. Titanic Curl, it's good, but it's not that good. I give it an A. You get more health, you get more region. Pretty simple. And the Queen's Gland, I would give this a B. Same thing with the uh, the happiest mask, it just summons something that'll take damage off of you. It's good in the early game if you get on like stage one or two. The Beetle Guard damage, uh the Beetle Guard used to not respawn um consistently, something like that. It, it definitely didn't. Nowadays, it gets killed and like instantly respawns. It was nothing like that back then. Yeah, the Neural was definitely better than the Gland back then. Like 100%. Uh, the Beetle Guard felt pretty bad. And there were only... Think about that. There were only two boss items. Two! This is how early the game. Two boss items. Only Neural or Queen's Gland. Hey, what do you want? You kill the Teleporter boss? Could've got an ATG, a Ukulele, a Will of the Wisp, an Ice or Fire Band. Nope. You get a Neural or a Queen's Gland. Let's go, baby! Other than that, just a Meat Shield. So, I'll give this a B. All right, and finally, I think I said that before, but actually, finally, the lunar items here. Shape glass, uh, I would give this an A, and you absolutely have to offset this thing with mobility, tons of mobility, and definitely the uh, the transcendence lunar as well, which we'll go over in a second, because reducing your health by 50% is disgusting. That's, that's a ton. That's one shot protection. I don't think anyone knew about one shot protection back then, unless they were like modders and they were like in the game code that early on. I don't think anybody knew about one shot protection. So offsetting it with mobility, that's accurate, but uh, taking transcendence with it. No, <laughs> that is not accurate. So shaped glass, I'll just spoil it because I don't think I talk anything else. You cut your survivability in half when it comes down to it, but you get double damage. So if you're moving around, tons of mobility, not getting hit that much, this is a very good item to get. All right, brittle crown. All right, so shaped glass, you know, it's a win more item. It's, all, it's always been what it is. <laughs> Back then, your one shot protection still applied with shaped glass. So you could literally go down to 100 maximum health and then you'd have one shot protection. So you got hit and then you would instantly heal it back up. Um, and then once I figured that out, once, or I don't know if I, you know, the community figured that out, shape class was the most busted item. It was a pretty big point of contention for a while, honestly, for a lot of players. Shape class was absolutely like the best item in the game, hands down, period. There's like no reason to not stack shape class. Every run was just like, why am I not stacking shape class? So incredibly OP. Uh, Brittle Crown. Uh, do not pick this item up ever. It is garbage. You will not have any gold if you pick this up. It's just straight garbage. There might be some people that can pull this thing off with super fast builds that never get hit, that kind of thing, but super situational, and it's it's really bad. The downside is- Dude, the amount of gold you got, I don't- Did it scale with time? It might have scaled with time back then, but you lost so much money. It, 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 I know you lose a lot of money nowadays too, but you can get it back pretty quickly. Dude, back then, Brittle Crown was garbage. Yeah, I don't think it scaled back then. I think that was why it was bad. I think it literally was just three gold per hit. So if you were playing commando or nail gun multi, I mean, sure, but you're always going to get hit because you're playing commando nail gun multi. You have no mobility basically while you're attacking stuff. <laughs> Brutal crown was so bad back then. I, I hope I gave it an F and maybe I said D. Just straight garbage. There might be pick this item up ever. So if you're moving around, tons of mobility, I hope I said not F. that much. Super situational and it's it's really bad. The downside is way worse than the upside. All right, so moving on to trans. I didn't say it, but I definitely that was supposed to be an F tier. I said never pick it up. That's an F tier item for sure. A little conflicted. This gets probably an A on everybody except for the engineer. It gets an F on the engineer because you have to heal. You absolutely need to heal an engineer and you don't heal when you're Again, like heal, that was the only play style on engineer. Shield, so you Bungus play style was the only play else, style. Because energy shield is generally more useful in the end game because you could just kite people around. I think it's after like five or six seconds your shields will start coming back up and it recharges pretty quickly. And it's much better to have a higher HP pool, which this gives 50% uh, more maximum health, which is insane. 
it's more it's better to have a higher health pool and not get hit than it is to have a lower health pool and have tons of mitigation or just all this other crap just have tons of mobility with tons of health and this gives you more health so it's as simple as that a tier on everybody so corpse here i would give this an s on the engineer because you just heal more yeah it's over time but it when it comes down to it you're still healing so much that it doesn't matter so corpse is s on the engineer and i give it a b on everybody else because you generally don't need to fill a huge chunk of your health back, and there's not really anything in the game right now that you can heal a huge chunk of your health. There's not like a percent damage leech. It's all flat leech, like flat amount, like one health, two health, eight health on the scythe, etc. So healing over time isn't that bad, and it gives you more healing. So beat turn everybody else. I mean, remember, one-shot protection. We didn't know about it. So honestly, that's not, that's not like super far off. I mean, given the context that Unaware of one-shot protection. He was unaware. <laughs> He's unaware. Given that context, I mean, that's not, like, too far off. I mean, A tier is a bit much. I say, like, B tier. Maybe C tier, but B tier. Eh, like, it, I guess, not knowing about one-shot protection, you would, if you would assume one-shot protection didn't exist, yeah. And I didn't know about the stack. Like, this, the stack, uh, if you stack more than one of this, even nowadays, it's just not good. Don't stack more than one corpse loom. Even if you want to do a corpse loom thing, you're going to just gut it if you do that just because of how the healing works. I have a whole video discussing it if you want to get the details on it. Just never take more than one stack of corpse loom. Um, but I, hey, I mean, A tier, especially because the other lunars and not knowing about one shot protection. So I didn't know how giga busted uh, this was. Tonic didn't exist back then. Um, so there, there weren't any good lunars, honestly. Uh, well, obviously, Shape Glass was really good back then, but we didn't know that. Um, but other than that, there weren't like any like really brutal crown was garbage. Effigy was garbage. Always has been. <laughs> um, what other lunars were there? It was corpse loom, shape glass, effigy of grief. Uh, uh, meteor, meteor. The freaking meteor was the only lunar equipment. Oh my gosh. And that's it. And corp uh, I say corpse loom transcendence, transcendence as well. I think that was like it, right? Pretty sure. Here, I would give this an S on the engineer because you just heal more. Yeah, it's over time. Hey, I wouldn't give it an S on the engineer. That was definitely, definitely wrong. So much that it doesn't matter. Beat turn everybody else. Gesture of the ground. Oh, don't gesture pick Do not pick this thing. Whoa. It's absolute garbage. All right. So Whoa! <laughs> what? Not bad. And it gives you more healing. So beat turn everybody else. Gesture of the ground. Don't pick this thing up. What? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Wait a second. Do not pick this thing up. It's absolute garbage. All right, so moving on. Though. Wait, what? Else. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. I'm putting myself in my sh my own shoes back then. Why did I say that? Maybe because I was a prey on Andy. Was that maybe because I was a prey on Andy and I was tired of it missing? Like I don't know. Even then, man. Even then. Yeah, capacitor existed. Like I don't know. It has to be only prey on. <laughs> Wait, I think I was in the the mindset of multiplayer as well because I think most people picked up gesture back then to troll in multiplayer with the meteor. I think that was like the only real use case that people were using back then. Again, chat, the game was out for less than two weeks back then. People were people didn't even know what a freaking proc chain was, okay? This was the infancy of the game, but I'm still trying to understand like how certainly I had gotten the gesture of the drowned with a royal capacitor at some point. I want to see my other tier list now. Hold on. Did I re-rank that one? I'm sure people gave me feedback on that. Here we go. Perfect. S plus for sure. All other Let's go, baby! Times, redemption! Still... The redemption arc! What can I say, dude? What can I say? Redemption arc coming in hot. Hold on. Let's get to the start of it. Gesture of the drown. I love this item. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like it's like I, hey, I always have loved this. Yo, I love this item. I always have this is my favorite item, bro. I have all this been my favorite the whole time. What do you mean, bro? It's just like five days later. It's literally five days later. Wait, what? Like, I, I had... Because I played multiplayer when the game first came out, too. Like, I bought... Because, dude, yo, based Hopu. Giga based Hopu. When the when uh, Early Access Risk of Rain 2 first came out, uh, they did a bundle. You could buy four games for, like, half the price or something. something. It was ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous. And the game itself was already, like, 10 or 20% off on top of that. It, giga based Hopu. So I, I was playing multiplayer with a bunch of my friends uh, back then. So And I, I really do think that the only time I had experienced Gesture of the Drown was in multiplayer with the freaking Meteor. And I was like, oh, that's just a troll thing. So let's see what they say here. Hold on. F. Gesture of the Drown. <laughs> I love this item. S plus if you have the equipment and you have the fuel cells. So the equipment, you need something with damage. You can get, like, a Promoter Cube and it'll spam it all the time. However, if you get, like, the Missile Launcher or the Royal Capacitor, something with a low cooldown and that hits really hard, this thing is disgusting, especially when you pair it with fuel cells. So the 
combo of this plus uh, damage equipment plus fuel cells, absolutely insane. S plus for sure. All other times, I would still pick it up. It's a fun item to use. It gets a B if you don't have that huge combo like I was talking about. All right, so that's it for the passive items. Let's move on. Interesting passive items, by the way. Interesting. Uh, I kind of want to go back and watch this one. Anyway, uh, that's, that's really interesting. I'm going to keep that up for now. Maybe we go back and watch that too. We'll see. Gesture of the round, don't pick this thing up. Do not pick this thing up. It's absolute garbage. <laughs> All right, so moving on to the equipment list here, starting with the Lunar stuff. That's meteorite, I would give this a B on everybody. It, yeah, it does a lot of damage, but the chances of it hitting every single hit, very low, and it damages you, and if you're playing Engineer, your turrets. So it's, it has big downside to it, not as good as... Uh, as I say B? Hellfire I kind of zoned out at the start. Did I say B? Hold up. Excuse me? All right, so moving on to the equipment list here, starting with the Lunar stuff. The Glowing Meteorite, I would give this a B on everybody. What the it, yeah. So it's, it has a big downside to it. Not as good as uh, as you might think. So be on everybody. Hellfire Tincture, don't pick this thing up. Absolute garbage. You don't want anything that damages you and this damages you a ton. So don't use this thing. Yeah, Hellfire was trash. Hellfire was just trash back then. I don't remember if the formula got changed or something. I don't know. For Hellfire, oh, no, he's the radius. I think the radius got like gigabuffed at some point. And Razor Wire did not exist back then, by the way. Razor Wire wasn't even an item, so you couldn't even do that. Uh, Hellfire just sucked. It, it was absolutely terrible back then. It was like Frost Relic AoE, which you saw the Frost Relic earlier. If you didn't, go ahead and rewind the VOD. Or if you're watching, if you're watching on YouTube, what's up? How you doing, YouTube? What up? Go ahead and rewind if you didn't see the uh, Frost Relic AoE. Actually, I have it right now. Just watch the footage. You'll see. It's tiny. Finally, FG of Grief. This is good. Uh, probably A tier on everybody. Oh, yeah! Yeah, what? Excuse me. Fire Tincture. Don't pick this thing up. Absolute garbage. You don't want anything that damages you, and this damages you a ton. So don't use this thing. And then finally, FG of Grief. This is good. Uh, probably A tier on everybody. You just place it when the boss spawns on the boss, and they have basically 20% less defense. So pretty useful. What? 200% less? What did I just say? Place it when the boss spawns on the boss, and they have basically 20% less defense. So pretty I, I meant to say 20. Surely I meant to say 20. I meant to say 20. There's no way. Like, even, like, I, there's no way I considered movement and speed because I already talked about Chrono Bobble being trash. So there's no way I can say, like, I, I meant to say 20, like 100%. There's no way. Guys, I meant to say 20. Guys, I meant to say 20. I did say 20. Wait, really? Are you sure? Everybody, you just place it when the boss spawns on the boss and they have basically 20% less defense. So, oh, I heard 200. I'm dumb. Never mind. Never mind, guys. Never mind. <laughs> I thought I said 200%. I was like, huh? Pretty useful. All right, moving on to the missile launcher. I would give this a C on everybody. It does a lot of damage, yeah, but uh, in reality, the missiles can go pretty much anywhere. I think how it works is if you target one monster, it'll hit that monster until that monster dies, then it'll go to the rest. Not true, not true. Not how it works. Never worked like that. Sure, if it is that case, then it might be a B, but I've seen my missiles go all over the place and they're just seemingly random, so I give this a C. Foreign Fruit, also a C. It's a big heal and it's instant, so it's not that bad in a sticky situation, but you generally want damage for your equipment, so I'll give this a C because it's not damage. The Primordial Cube, this is definitely S. This is so good in the later stages because you just pop it, especially if you have some fuel cells. You that's not bad. Charge this bad boy. You S is it, over, all but the monsters go into eight. it, and then you just AOE the crap out of them. Boom, they all explode. If you somehow do it next to a boss, then that boss takes a butt ton of damage. Like, it's nuts. But, Primordial Cube is absolutely nuts. But, it's CC combined with tons of damage, if you think about it. All right, Ocular HUD. Uh, I'd give this a D, honestly. It's not that good. It's good in the early stages to get 100% crit, but once you start getting some glasses, do I say uh, it? This is just this is absolutely useless, and it, it's less. Sorry. All right, moving on to the Ocular HUD. I would give this a D tier. That might sound a little surprising, but. <laughs> Bro, it, just edit it. You less mean? effective the do more your job i would give this a d tier and that might sound a little surprising but if you think about it this gets less effective the more crit glasses you have so the sunglasses so if you have five crit glasses you're only getting half all right moving uh this is just this is absolutely useless and it, it's less sorry all right moving on to the ocular hud i would give this a d tier and that might sound a little surprising but if you think about it this gets less effective the more crit glasses you have which so is true so if you have five crit glasses you're only getting half of the benefit wait was that kayla in the bed Yo, the more what the heck? So the sunglasses tier, and that might sound a little surprising, Wife but jump scare. All right, Kayla's on getting in hood. bed, boys. A D. That might sound a little surprising, but <laughs> get some content, this is some real content. The more crit glasses you have, so the sunglasses. So if you have five crit glasses, you're only getting half of the benefit of this, and any item that you get less benefit from with more stuff, it makes no sense to me. So D tier, it's good that's for the fair. early stage. If the boss spawns and you get in, you get 100 crit. That's yeah, fair. Eight seconds, but that's fair. I give this a D. The backup, I'd give this an F. This thing sucks. Don't even pick this up. Crayon accumulator. This thing is the BFG. Let's go. Do. Drone Andy's molding across the planet. Let's go. Backup F tier. That's right. Always has been, baby. It is great. I love this thing. This is an S for sure. This is one of the best relics. So definitely request. Relics? Definitely pick this thing up if you get it. Uh, that, that is actually kind of true. Back then, again, because back then there were not a lot of choices with equipment and AOE was not... Okay, well, this was, again, I didn't I didn't understand that items had proc coefficient as well. So ukulele, meat hook, could chain your stuff. I thought it was just like Will of the Wisp, gasoline was your AOE. So getting... And honestly, back then, getting a prey on felt really, 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 really good. Really good. Especially at the infancy of Monsoon, where it was all about... Uh, you were dealing with a lot of enemies because we didn't know about target priority and efficient clearing and looting and all that stuff. So you, you, you had a lot of monsters on the stage at any given time. So the Preon felt especially good back then. So probably overrated a little bit. I think I give it an S. I give it like an A or a B. And again, this is in the context of back then. I'm saying I would probably give it now. I'm talking about in the context. 
Like if I had the information that I have now back then, but still like ranking it in the context of what the game was like back then, if that makes sense. I'd give it like a B, a, probably A actually back then. All right, let's go. Uh, Milky Chrysalis, it does something. I'll give it a D. It's not an F tier because you get no. fire and you get some movement speed. F tier. Again, you want damage from your equipment. F, you mobility. F, or F. You guys remember old Milky Chrysalis? Oh my gosh. The dash, when you press spacebar and you dash, you know, the only reason to ever use Milky Chrysalis, that didn't even exist. Okay. Milky Chrysalis was so bad. It felt terrible to use a Milky Chrysalis back then. So freaking bad. That should have been F tier, honestly. That was terrible. Or utility. The Royal Capacitor, this also gets an S, does a ton of damage, and it has almost infinite range. So if you see anything, even through walls, you'll see icon on your screen. Dude, pop yeah, up, yeah. It, it used to uh, show you the icon no matter where the enemy was. So you, with with a, yo, with the Capacitor, with the gesture combo back then, you literally could just spin in a circle. You could just go like this the whole time, and you would just blow up everything on the map. That's all you had to do, because it, 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 it uh, ESP'd them through the walls. You just didn't have to do anything. It was great. Uh, your equipment hotkey, and then you can just press it. Boom, it hits the target instantly. So very, very, very strong. I'll give this an S for sure. Crowdfunder, uh, I'll give this a C. It's okay. The, the money cost doesn't matter in late game, and it deals, it deals a significant amount of damage because the rate of fire gets really fast. So not bad. I'll give it a C. Uh wow. I wonder what happened. <laughs> That's funny, dude. That's funny. I wonder what I said about it in the other two lists. Uh, again, the equipment pool was not that big back then, too. But I think I think that's fair. I don't know why I started hating on Crowdfunder. Uh, the, I think it was the next patch. I was like, oh, this thing sucks. This thing's terrible. I mean, it's still, like, given the context of the run. You don't want to spend your money in the early game. I think, I think it was more so because my knowledge of equipment... In general, it, it, I came to realize that the equipment you really it really only matters for the start of your run, if that makes sense. The first like four stages, because uh, again, Sky Meadow didn't exist back then. So basically, before the first loop, your equipment uh, mattered a ton, but after that, it didn't really matter. So I think because of that, that's why I started. And I, I was too harsh. I was definitely too harsh on the crowdfunder. Like after I had that realization of the equipment, I was too harsh on it a little bit. But that, that is definitely why, because uh, I didn't have that information back then about equipments, how they're basically only useful for the first the first loop, the first four stages back then. And again, given that context, I think it's fair. Give it a C back then. Uh, Gnarled Wood Sprite. So in group play, this is the only exception for an equipment you want that's not damage. I would give it an A in group play and on the multi. So in group play, obviously, you can send it to your friends, heal them if they're in a sticky situation. Uh, maybe to B, maybe B in group play. But on the multi, I'd give this an A because the multi gets to carry two relics. Or I keep all these relics, equipment. So what you do is you put this on one of your slots and they get something else. And you see right here, when it's sent to an ally, they heal for 10% of their HP. When you switch your weapon on the multi and then you switch back to it, that's technically counting as switching back to this and it's sending it back to you. So you heal for 10% of your health every time you swap to this thing. So I'll what? you're doing it right here. Oh and my gosh. You just, you just spam R, it's cool. And you get healed for 10% of your HP probably every half second. So it's just pretty good. You run away, you're in a situation, you spam right. this game, and there you go. But oh. everybody else has to give this a D. Finally, radar scanner. Sadly, happened. this gets an F. We're ending it out with an F here, but <laughs> it's not that useful. Once you learn the maps, you learn where all the spawns are, even the secret stuff. So it's just totally useless. To all right. So I hope you guys enjoyed Accurate. watching. Uh, the radar you didn't give you different icons back then. It was just I think it was the question mark or the dots. It was, I think it was question marks. Every single thing would be a question mark. <laughs> so it was even worse back then. But it was. It's always been bad. Obviously. All right. What's my closing statement? This tier list. If you have any suggestions, any complaints about this, you think this item's god tier, and I said it was garbage, uh, go ahead and let me know in the comments. And thank you for watching. Honestly, not that bad of a tier list. Not that bad. All things considered, given the game had only been out for about two weeks, I just started my monsoon journey in general. There was no final boss. There was uh, no Sky Meadow, so it was only four stage per loop. Honestly, most of those things are pretty accurate. I'm kind of surprised. I, th I remember it being worse in my head, and I genuinely did this to get discussion on the items. Like, no one was making... Uh, no one. It's no surprise. I started making this content first, so I naturally... Kept doing it, kept doing it, and kept uh, getting the growth off of it. Like, no one was making that content, number one. So, it was, like, the first one where people could, like, watch and, like, start getting discussion on the items. That's 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 all my... That was my only goal with it. And I say that... I'll, I'll show you the intro of this video. That was really my only goal with it. But honestly, all things considered, that wasn't that bad. I thought it was, like, way worse than that. Um, I, ha I haven't seen that video in a super, super long time. Probably since it released, honestly. But I remember it being worse. Huh. Five days, or six days. I mean, it came out six days after this one. Do you? So, do you want to go through this one as well? Let's freaking do it. I won't pot... Don't worry, guys. We'll, we'll get to Noita within, like, half an hour, if I had to say. Oh, this is why I thought it was April 10th. Woolly is facing an impossible command. Let's take a look inside Woolly's brain for some insight. Wow, that's a nice beard, brother man, Bill. Oh. <laughs> Just stop, dude. All right, let's go.
Hello, and welcome to my updated item and equipment tier list for Risk of Rain 2 as of April 10th, 2019. I won't mention changes in ratings between this list and the previous list, as I mentioned in the, the intro to this video. Thankfully, we know. We know the previous rankings. So now we can cross compare. Let's because go. Because syringe is extremely useful on everybody, even the artificer. And the artificer has a charge <laughs> based system on his auto attacks. He can only shoot four, and then they have to wait for them to recharge. <laughs> so the syringe. Your mind's on the Artificer. So if you're playing the Artificer, the only exception is the Artificer. And I'll probably give these a B on the Artificer. A for everybody but the Artificer. The Artificer A plus on everybody but the Artificer. And I'm not going to repeat myself 10 million times, but because the Artificer attacks so slow, this isn't very good on the Artificer. So D on the Artificer, but A plus on everybody else. I'm not going to repeat myself. Repeat yourself. B plus on everybody except for the Artificer. For the millionth time, Artificer doesn't attack fast, so anything with attack speed isn't that good on the Artificer. So it's a D on the Artificer. D on the Artificer because for the two millionth time now, Artificer attacks really slow. Why did I say it again? So, the, so F on the Artificer. B plus on everybody except for the Artificer. Hit on the Artificer. I'll give it a C on the Artificer. I'll give it a C on the Lens makers glasses. These are also S crits. You can crit on almost everything in the game. If it says redemption standard, arc, you baby. Crit on it. Crowbar. So I actually give a crowbar an A. Something that does burst. Then these are really, really good. A for burst. C on everyone that's not a burst. So moving on fair. to the tri tip dagger. So I have to give this a B plus. Not an A. Definitely not an S because you have to scale this with attack speed. There's no limit on the amount. So of I went from you a D to enemy, a B but there B is a limit plus. to your bleed chances. And if you have like ten of these, then yeah, you get 150 percent bleed chance. But that 50 percent, the extra 50 percent, does absolutely nothing. So 100 percent chance to bleed is the max. It has been confirmed. It's on the wiki. I'll put a clip up. And plus this scale with base damage so it, you if you crit it does no more damage it has no synergy with the actual damage of your attack simply how fast you attack so i have to give this thing a b plus all right moving on to the war that's damage. fair again again back then bleed did not uh stack infinitely it did not refresh its duration so honestly b uh, still might be a bit of an overrating but i, I played i i'm a bit biased because i played like almost exclusively a huntress commando multi back then if i remember correctly so Anyway, this can save your butt. Did you guys hear that in the I'll background, by the way? What the heck just happened? Did you hear that? Did you hear like the crash in the background? This can save your butt. This can save your butt. This, this can, can save your butt. Your butt. Gasoline. I'll give this a C. It's great for mopping up groups. It gives you increased radius and increased damage per stack. But you have to get quite a few of these. And what did I give it? An A? But I think I gave this an A. So I lowered it to a C. Wow. Straight up better than this. So I'll give it a C. Moving on to the I feel, I feel like that's fair too. It, it, I don't think gasoline was, I said it was overrated when I talked about it. Backup magazines. So these are S plus on absolutely everybody except for the engineer. So yeah, on the no, engineer, your secondary still kills, overrated. Your Sticky bombs, everybody's favorite item. So I'll give these an S tier, not an S plus tier. Don't get me wrong. They're still insanely strong, but the only reason they don't get S plus is because you absolutely have to be attacking fast to proc as many of these as possible. On top of that, they're not that useful with just one or two. You have to get like six, seven, maybe 10 of these before they start pumping up. They should be S plus tier too. That was just, that's just silly. Yeah, yeah I don't know why I said backup mag was S plus. Super over, I, I over rated that item that was just like personal preference or something i don't know that was insane s tier for sure so one of these items you just get a 20 percent more multiplier to boss damage it's crazy powerful you only get 10 percent per stack which is why i'm giving it an s not an yeah, s yeah this should have been s, back then too. Of them, you, s tier for sure eh, okay. i think that's an overrate actually eh. I, I would say probably a, a was fine on the last list. I don't know why I bumped that up to S. Moving on to the uncommon items now, starting with the missile launcher. This thing gets an A. So 300% uh, damage is a ton, especially 300% per stack. Uh, However, you don't get increased chance to proc, so I have to give this an A. Uh, whoa, 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 again, 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 again. Hold on. It sounds disgusting. Uh, trust me. I know. I know. It sounds disgusting to your ears nowadays, but old sticky bombs, why would you get an ATG? And when old sticky bombs existed, there was no point in getting an ATG. Wisp, this will get a B. AOE effects are generally pretty good. You only need a couple of them, which makes this even better. You don't really need like 10 of them. You just need one or two, maybe three. So anything that piles mobs together, the will of the wisp will chain. Better than the gasoline because it just needs less stacks as against your So better than gasoline is correct, but better. B is. It gives one extra max jump. And this thing gets an A. Very good. It's utility. You can right. the ukulele. So I'll actually give this thing a B, not an A, definitely not an S. And the reason for that is, yes, it does 80% damage to AOE. Okay, I still, so I still didn't understand that items have proc coefficient. What the heck, dude? I didn't know about proc chains. What the heck? Yeah, when did I figure out proc chains? Damage. Essentially, what you have to do is you have to charge your attack and then press the sprint button. And as long as you hold the left click, you'll continue charging the attack and you can attack while you're sprinting. And then as soon as the attack goes off, you just have to charge up another one. Press nice. sprint again. So there's nice like, editing, maybe, bro. Nice uh, editing. Yes. Keep keep the rose buckler thing right on the screen when they're trying to demonstrate the sprint attack. Keep, keep it right there, guys. That, good, good job. So you can pretty much sprint while you attack. So good job, bully. Like Kiara's ban, I give this a B plus, not a B. So it has the same 8% chance to proc on hit, which does not go up on stack, but it does 500% damage and you get more damage per stack. I'll give it a D because this slow will not prove to be that effective. Didn't Later change game, it. Let's go. Stick to your guns. That's what it is. Read the chat. I'm literally reading the chat right now. What is a bent? What even is that? Who we'll looked that up? What'd you call me? Bent? What does that, what does that mean? What's a bent? <laughs> Wait, I'm not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so continuing on. I call this thing the mega jump. It's the head 5T V2. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. So this is an S. Not only. It's the what? It's the what? The tanking potential. I call this thing the mega jump. It's the head 5T V2. I don't so F on Artificer. Oh, True. Tesla Coil. This is also an S, but it's an S on absolutely everybody. Tesla Coil is insane because all you have to do is run around and this thing will activate. You can there literally, you go. If you See? To, Redem I'm telling you. Redemption arc, baby. Let's go. All right, moving on to the 57 Leaf Clover. This thing gets an S on absolutely yes! everybody. Yes! Woo! 
Redemption arc. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right, the sentient meat hook. I'll give this a B plus on everybody except for the artificer. I'll give it a C because again, anything ooh, on hit on the artificer ah, is not as still. good as everyone else. Because I guess that is undervalued proc chains. Holy crap, dude. B? I said B plus though. B? So the soul bound catalyst here. I'll give this an S only if you have the gesture of the drown and fuel cells or right, just fuel cells. Dio's best friend. This item is an S plus on everybody because it gives you a free life. It's pretty self-explanatory. However, on nah. the engineer, this gets S plus plus. It's the only item on the Whoa! list. It's just an S plus plus. Wait a second. On your equipment, very very. Oh. However, on the engineer, this gets S plus plus. It's the only item on the list. It's in a different league on the engineer. Holy! The so your turrets getting another life is absolutely powerful as crap. So S plus plus on the engineer. Dios go crazy, bro. It doesn't give you the shields right away. You have to wait for the shield to recharge. So when you kill oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Did you guys forget about that? Dude, not only when you lost the lightning aspect, you would lose those shields, you wouldn't get your health back. So you you spawn in, or you you, you now are having 50% of your health for no reason. Nothing you could have done about it because you lost the lightning aspect. Not only that, you didn't get full shields off of killing the enemy right away. They had to trickle up. If you got damaged, it would delay the recharge. It was that bad. All right, brain stocks, I will give it a B only because it is super, super situational. You have to kill not a regular monster, but an elite monster. And then you have a three second window where you can spam all your skills for free. Nah, it's really it's powerful, but higher. you have to kill an elite monster. All right, pretty good, HP. pretty good changes, I would say, again, based on the other tier list. A on everybody with the caveat that you have to mitigate this very heavily. Okay, again, so I don't think we knew about one shot protection. So that's why I said shape glass A. This was absolutely S, giga S, S plus 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 back then. <laughs> But I don't think we knew about one shot protection yet. So for the engineer, your turrets get this effect. So when your turrets hit stuff, they will gain oh. you gold. Oh! However, if your turrets get hit, they do not lose you gold. That remember that? Remember that? That was a big one, dude. You remember that one? Oh, man. You did not used to lose money when your turrets got hit. Holy guacamole. Imagine that. It's so powerful. So you run around like a madman on the engineer. Put your turrets down. They'll just hit a bunch of stuff. Pop, 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 pop. You get all the gold for it. And as long as you don't get hit, you <laughs> that was a good edit. run around like a madman on the engineer. Put your turrets down. They'll just hit a bunch of stuff. Pop, 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 pop. You get all the gold for it. And as long as you gesture of the drown. I love this item. S plus if you have the equipment and you have the fuel cells. So the equipment needs something Remember what I said? You guys remember what it was on the other one? Gesture of the drown. Don't pick this thing up. Do not pick this thing up. It's absolute garbage. Love this item. S plus if you have the equipment and you have the fuel cells. So the equipment, you need something with damage. You can get like a probability cube and it'll spam it all the time. Like, Heck yeah, it's my favorite. I've always loved that thing. Gesture of the Drown, we go way back, baby. We go way back. What can I say? Hey, yo, Gesture of the Drown. Heck yeah, dude. But from what I've heard, this critical strike chance is separate from your actual crits. So if you have 10 <laughs> lint- Wait, no! I, no, I, because I was wearing this exact shirt when I, when I tested this. What? If any confirmation on this, please let me know. No, 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 no. Yeah, so it doesn't work like that. And I'm pretty sure I, I tested this like the day after I made this or something. All right, going on to the Milky Chrysalis. I'll just give this a C. Yeah, it lets you fly. It gives you some movement speed. Nah, I don't personally nah, 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 nah. I should have been like an F, a Z, Z, Z tier. Z tier, bro. Put it down there. And especially because it has a chance to damage yourself. Plus, it's a pretty nice cooldown. So I'll give it a C. You could probably D. pull this thing off with the gesture of the drown yourself thing. It'd be, it'd be really fun to try and dodge yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool so I'll give it a C. You could probably pull this thing off with the gesture of the drown feel self thing. It'd be, it'd be really fun to try and dodge everything. I feel self thing. It'd be, it'd be really 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 feel self thing. It'd be, it'd be really. Wait, what did I say for after the lunar items? The effigy of grief. It does something. I'll give it a D. The the slow. Good. What I gave this like an A, didn't I? Wait, hold on. All right, good. Uh, probably A tier on everybody. You just place it when the boss bonds on the. Okay, good. Good that I reduced it to a D, which is what it should be. It gives you a little bit more damage, but D again, for a dumpster. I'll give it a D. The the slow is not that useful, but the armor reduced, yeah, it gives you a little bit more damage, but again, it's melee range. You have to place it. You don't throw it or anything. You just set oh, it where yeah, you Yeah, yeah. You couldn't throw it back then. It, it didn't go where you were looking. You had to it placed it right beneath you. So not only did you have to be right next to the enemy, it affected you. When you place the effigy of grief, it affected you. And <laughs> it was so bad. Alright, anyway, that's it, boys. Hey. Honestly, that 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 tier list is better for sure. Still, still some iffy, eh, still some iffy things. Ukulele being uh, B tier, meat hooks being uh, B tier. But for the most part, I think this list was not that bad. Why is it so much higher detail? Look at that. You want me to be cringe? Okay, sticky bombs are cringe. Dagoth, the true doubter. You are cringe. You are cringe. You're cringe. You're cringe. You're cringe. You're cringe. I said it. I said it. You're just. Grungo! Grungo!